Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Manor Lords. Love our little cinematic intro, it's always so welcoming and cozy, coming back to the little humble town of swords. Now, before we get to the episode proper, there's a few things I want to address from the previous episode, before we have a look at the situation on the town and kind of lay out our plan for what we're going to do. The first one is that we've had a bug fix. It's just happened by itself on reloading the game. If you remember the previous episode, this particular plot, its house, was kind of shifted over and on top of this fence line, but it just... It just fixed itself. It realigned on loading the game. It's quite an interesting little bug that must be for a house to be able to even be built off the plot and then somehow have the data in there to know where to snap back to. So anyway, shout out. Best kind of bug you can get is one that just fixes itself and it looks so much better now for it. I was worried that the houses looked really small and detached and really weird, but now it's a bit better because it is further out than the what we've been calling Main Street. And not to get ahead of myself, but some people said to call it Burns Street in the comments of the previous episode because Jamie Kell Burns is the fallen soldier from the brewery. I wrote it in the top comment of the previous episode. And we had some, some, some suggestions to name the entire street after him because we're getting so familiar with it. So I kind of like the idea of that, Burns Street. It also makes sense for that guy because he is a person who is gifted something like 30 memberships. So basically 30 people who live in this town owe their livelihoods to him, pretty much. Uh, so shout out to Jamie Kell Burns. Now, back to this little area, I just thought one thing that was kind of coincidental and just cool about it is that because it's one of these smaller houses, housing plots, we have this nice little low stone fence wall all the, all the way around it. And it just looks good separating that out from the stables, although um, this ox appears to be to a little bit deeper. stuck. <laughs> Need to dig the foundations deeper, no, sh no shit. Speaking of... This house here is not complete, so why is that? So it turns out that the building is paused, which has made the construction job get paused as well. So a little bit of an oversight here, but if you have a building like a brewery, a blacksmith, something like that, and you pause the production on whatever it's making, and then you upgrade the building, God forbid, uh, it'll actually just deliver all the material. It builds a sort of frame, as you can see, and then it just doesn't complete. It, con it considers it paused construction. So we'll just lift that, resume the building, and that should finish just fine. But an interesting little problem to, if you ever find yourself having that. The tooltip gave it away. The tooltip said, join your shop, paused construction. Then I was like, oh, okay. So it was good to spot that. Uh, one of the other things is we have a pasture now. We're bringing in sheep. We saw four at the end of the previous episode, so two are on the way. And we should be bringing in a total of 20. I don't know yet if you can transfer... transfer sheep or livestock between regions if you could that'd be awesome because we've so much regional wealth here it'd be nice to bring all our livestock in here and then ship them on down to nusselo which is here right so nusselo is the region that we want to get so this is the entire map we have in the top left nusselo and that has extremely good fertility. it'd be a great fertile region for us to start with for farming uh, and kind of supply the growth of swords by sending stuff back all the time that's the goal I know we can at least set up pack mules and stuff to go bet between the regions, so it should be easier for us to do that because of the money we have. Um, and that's pretty much it. The only last thing would be we developed this little woodland industry area, and one thing I forgot to actually build was a charcoal kiln. Right, we unlocked it in the previous episode, so it converts one firewood into two charcoal, making ref refueling twice as efficient. Uh, so the other thing is to then go with a deep mine, so we have an indefinite source of iron. Uh, some people were lamenting the fact that I didn't go with armor making and then advanced armor making. The reason I didn't, I mean, that would have been nice, not gonna lie, but the main reason I didn't was because I thought, like, we could also get... we Basically, we've only got one more development point in the game, I think. According to what people tell me, actually, I haven't tested it. But if we do, so we're just gonna get that. Knowing we only had two, I felt, okay, we'll get these two together. If we had three in reserve, I might have just gone for these three and just imported the iron instead, but... Maybe we could set up iron making in a different region? Possibly? We could always transfer the infinite iron we get from this one to another one if we could set up enough pack mules. I don't really know how the transfer stuff works just yet, so we'll have to just get to it. Anyways, I just thought I should address that. Uh, so yes, we, we should build a um, charcoal kiln. It turns one firewood into two charcoal, uh, effectively doubling the efficiency of the fuel. Uh, so right now, we have... Right now, we've got 171 firewood, so we could basically say that we've got, you know, 340 charcoal, so if we could just refine it. Now, th it also works really nicely for us, because it means that maybe we don't have to cut down quite as much wood. Um, so we could slow the rate of destruction out here. Uh, anyways, so yeah, let's do that. It's quite a big building, though, so... I might It might look a little weird being on a, quite a slope here. Maybe we should do something like... What was that noise? Bandit Camp decided. Let's just spot that really quickly. Ah, oh, it's in the same look. Oh, well, 
Yeah, pretty much in the same location. The previous one was actually just a little closer over this way. Quite odd. It's like they like setting up next to the clay. But anyway, do we have the Baron's army? Not yet. We'll have to just send our little guys out to do that, deal with that. So let's go with the Spear Militia. Just 30 of them. Off you get going. Wait for them to muster. But anyway, in the meantime, let's build this. Charcoal kiln. I... I don't think I'm going to put it on the hill. I think it would look too weird being slanted so much. So we're going to build it in toward the back here. We'll angle it just to be a little r different. So maybe if a bit of space to get out the side actually would be kind of nice. So we'll just pop it back just a little bit further. Get to work, lads. <sighs> Love that voice. So funny. So strained the way he's saying it. It's like how I do my intros. I'm like... All right, everybody, Darren here. You gotta have the energy. And then I slowly relax into my sleepy voice that puts everyone to sleep a little bit later. If I had the real confidence, I could just start an episode like this. Hey, guys, what's up? Playing some Manor Lords. What do you think of that? Do you think people would click off? Or maybe they would just fall asleep instantly, driving the watch time even higher. Ooh, we have people running across the mine. I don't know if I'll allow that or not <laughs> taking the time to get out here um, now it's actually coincidence because I had planned this all along we talked about it on a stream but I was thinking of moving the manor to somewhere here and then trying to build a wall around the entire settlement don't know if it's even possible people have just theorized it I, maybe some youtubers have done it I haven't seen but um, it seems like when you're building up on the castle planner, you can indefinitely extend the radius by placing down towers. This radius here that we can build in moves out with each tower. So in theory, unless it has some sort of limit, you could just keep going around the entire town. And then in theory, I guess again, bandits or other armies, for instance, would have to go through the gatehouses. Unless we've seen them, at least on stream, bandits can come in and just throw torches and everything. Maybe they just do that for walls and they just burn them down. I, I really don't know. But if they can burn buildings, like, really quickly, you'd wonder why they couldn't for something like that. But um, if people think that's a cool idea, we'll try to do it. Just as a fun kind of goal, you know? All right, we'll just make a little winding walk out that way and let them get going. If we have a, a little message saying that the other uh, barons' armies are moving, then we'll change strategy a little bit. But for now, we'll just let them do their thing in the background. Right, 22 logs here. Let's lower that down to just two. I'm going to start up production on this logging camp over here just to build up some logs. Because if we were to build over here, logging camps are interesting because they basically work as a storehouse for logs, right? And oxes then have to pull them. But you could have multiple logging camps around here. The only way to increase your inventory space for logs is to have more logging camps. You don't have to assign anyone to them. The oxes will just bring them to that little inventory that's in there. Um, but it might be a good idea to do that, just because then, if we're building the manor out in this direction, and, and just stuff out here, you don't have to travel as far. Might, you know, it's like another deposit box for timber and for construction material, so... I might do that. We already have one, but I'm considering getting another. Anyway, so while things are happening in the background, we can take stock of the situation. We currently have 44 families, 52 living space, so plenty of people moving in. We're over 75% approval, so two families per month. 138 population, have named all the people in the game. Um, except for, actually, there's one family I haven't named living in there. There's two families, but one of them doesn't have names yet, so I just noticed that before recording, and I was like, oh, I'm not going to open up the list again and add even more. I'll do it in the next one. Um, I just thought I should mention that, so we might still see some regular names walking around. I just wanted to be honest. Had to get it off my chest. Couldn't lie to you guys. There's a family out there that's not named. <laughs> even though we do get them all the time during the episode that, that aren't named, of course. And I know 99% of people don't care, but... I care. Anyways, uh, let's have a look. We get up. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing I really want to do in this episode. Basically, the idea now is just to do lots of upgrades. Also, kind of want to expand around the back of the church for housing, just generally speaking. We want to bring in animals and just keep driving up the growth and population. I mean, that's really it. And set up another region with farming. So, we have 861 influence. If we go take out that bandit camp, that should be enough to get us over the edge for a thousand. We have good money, so we should also, in theory, be able to just conquer, um, settle the region, I mean, uh, pretty much straight away. Nice, that's actually gone ahead pretty quickly. So we've got three free families, so I'll probably just assign some to that straight up. We could also cosmetically clean up the area just a bit. Nice. 
and maybe a road here can separate the houses that will be facing into that and some facing out the other way. There's also room for little houses down around this area. I want to, you know, kind of um, shove in as many houses as compact as possible when we have gaps and stuff. I think it makes sense. Construction finished of the charcoal kiln. Speaking of, in the grandery now, we'd want to go to the advanced tab and turn on charcoal so we can actually store it here. Uh, so yeah, cool. We'll just put a, two families on that, shall we? Two are on the woodcutters at the moment. Foresters have two families on them, and I'll just make sure that they are where I want them to be, which is basically here. Alright, cool. 81%. Looking good, feeling good, <laughs> smelling good. You don't have to trust me on that one. Although, we should just do some upgrades now, because I suppose timber will just get delivered over here. Another family moving in. Love to see it. So, these four can be upgraded. Want to get lots of tier 2 plots. Remember, increasing the um, plot size, we don't get an extra family until we get to tier 3. But, we do get more regional wealth. Level 1, they don't provide anything. Level 2, they provide 1. So, it's not much, considering how much we're making right now, but... It's something, and it's passive income. Plus, we could tax it, actually. A few people in the comments are blaming me for the death of Jamie Kelber and saying I didn't uh, supply them with armor. Well, how dare you? <laughs> he put himself in a position, surrounded himself with four guys, thought he was a hero. Threw his life away. Anyway, <laughs> where are we? So there's the camp. Man, this is a dense, dense forest. Let's get ourselves over here, maybe. Oh no, they're there. They're actually sitting around their camp and everything. It's a dangerous place for a um, tree and a campfire. Oh, look! Oh, that's so cute! They just sit on their little wooden stumps, waiting. I actually have no idea how charcoal burning works or whatever this... what this does. Interesting to look it up. I'm gonna say it's a mound of dirt where you throw in... birch wood and... Somehow you get charcoal out of that by burning it in a specific way. How about that? Would I survive out in the wild? Probably not. You know? Probably not. I reckon I'd probably die within eight hours. <laughs> An extremely low amount of time. Just from fear. And loneliness. Where does the ground kind of flatten? It kind of flattens... Oh, it doesn't really. Maybe over here? In the woodland. Seems to level out over there. So we'll just get over there. It's just raiders, I know. But, you know. Don't want to lose another person if we could avoid it. Someone actually said, can you get down on the ground while the fight's happening? Oh my god. <laughs> That's so cool, actually. It's like Mountain Blade now. Except I'm just a visitor. Don't mind me. I'm just watching the fight take place. I guess I could run behind my own line. I'm like the general then, yeah? Give him what for, men. Hold the formation. <laughs> Protect me at all costs. Oh, got a little bit of camera shake in there. I'd love to see it. Yeah, I don't really like doing this because it's so immersion breaking being like on the ground with them. But I know what people want to see. Just get like really close and see the fight. But this is pretty close anyway. We're down to 12. A few of them have been lost already. I noticed the frame rate's dipped right now, and that's actually not to do with the fight or anything or the woodland. It's to do with sunrise. The sun seems to come up super fast, like you can see it kind of moving quite fast, and then slows down as the time of day is adjusting. But for some reason, that's causing um, quite a big FPS drop as it's happening. What the hell is this guy doing? He's just backing off. He's already ready to get out of there. He's just pretending. Yeah, he's gone. Now, did we lose anyone? We didn't. We have 30. I was worried that that body there looked like one of my guys, but nope. We had 30 on the way out. All good. Alright, we can run now. Take out that bandit camp. And, oh! We have the influence we need. So what we could do is actually start claiming it now. Alright, Nussolo is being claimed. Nussolo. Yeah, that's I guess how you say it. <laughs> Hopefully we don't get contested by the Baron, but I think we could maybe- I don't know if we could handle him. I actually have no idea what kind of force he brings to you, or brings at you, but he does have more territories, so if it's based even on just, like, scaling how much he has, maybe he gets money from each territory, then I imagine it's something that we have to really prepare for and think about. Message. Uh, it belongs to me, this money. 
Thank you. You can come back home now. I like this area quite a lot. It's really nice on the hill. And uh, I tweeted a picture of like this area here with all the people walking home. Did really well. I think actually um, Hooded Horse retweeted it, which is nice. Follow me on Twitter, I guess. What Darren plays at X <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and uh, I have my own Twitter, but I don't really post very often. It's um, at What Darren Says. So instead of plays, it's S A Y S at the end. I oh, I pretty much never ever promote it. So it'll be interesting to see if anyone follows. <laughs> but also we have a Discord, discordgg WDP. Uh, we have people in there for loads of different games, general gaming chat, as well as there's a Manor Lords channel, a Frostpunk channel uh, for my ongoing series, general channels like Paradox, Total War, strategy games, you know, basically. Screenshots and food, love those channels. Just I like seeing what other people are playing. I'm playing random things all the time. All right, anyways, construction upgrade completed, Burgage plot level twos. Are they all done? Wow, that was that was really fast. Good job. All right, let's do these ones then. Um, I also saw a comment saying like, oh, you could have put a street behind between these houses. I like the idea of the idea of doing that sometimes, but not everywhere. Um, so I, I partially agree, but I didn't. Th I thought a cluster of houses close together here actually was just like better, and I kind of felt the same here. It's like the gardens are wall to wall, but there's no need for a trail between them. But I'm playing City Skylines at the moment, and I designed out an estate where it was very much row housing like this, and I did put little alleyways between them. Sometimes you see that, sometimes you don't. Just depends. Alright, we've disbanded that unit, they're gonna get back to work. Whew, alright, how are we doing now for charcoal and stuff? 15. I wonder if they're gonna set up their own charcoal stalls. We'll assign another one to this now, because they're doing wood and charcoal. And charcoal could probably be stored here, but I'm gonna say no. Again, just to keep everything localized to that storehouse. All right, 52 families. We have 46 families now in total. New stalls have been set up, a new firewood stall. We're just waiting on that region. It's almost done. And just keep upgrading our houses. All right, region cleaned. Well, this gives me something to do, right? So now we have this big fat region for ourselves. Nice stone deposit here, 180. Right, so in deciding where we're gonna actually build here on Nussolo, We'll have to kind of think about the deposits, because the fertility is just pretty much uniformly good everywhere. Almost. For wheat, anyway. Flax is a little bit different. Barley's pretty good, and rye is fantastic. But, you know, we've got a rich iron deposit here. Which is so funny, because we could also do the deep mine here, but we won't do that. We'll just do all farming in this region, because the fertility is just too good to pass up. Down here, we've got berries. As a rich deposit in clay. Now, ultimately, I think you can kind of terraform and shift the terrain to be fertile with pastures and stuff but it seems like a waste not to make use of all this this just seems too good so i reckon we'll just put the town somewhere in between both of these um deposits just because that, that seems to make sense to me so let's get started so we'll go with residential or sorry administration we need a settler's camp it's gonna be 250 now ooh, a town a farming village a forest village or a mining so that's all locked unfortunately but we could start with modest average or plentiful resources so we actually start with tools so that makes me wonder i've never made tools in the game does it actually increase your productivity because i feel like in games like banished and farthest frontier yes it does but i didn't i don't know why i just didn't consider that it did in this game because it doesn't say it anywhere i just thought maybe it's not even a thing <laughs> maybe we should make some tools get our efficiency bonuses up even further anyways let's go with average just to be in the middle rather than spend everything we have so we'll spend about half all right, so region settled Nussolo. I'm going to have to name this something else. All right, so I'm going to call it the Knoll. So the Knoll is the name of the village where I grew up. And people are wondering how to spell it and everything, so you can kind of find that out now. You know, you can easily look it up on Google Maps. It is a bit different now. You know, there's a big housing development that went up in it, so there was like 30 or 40 houses added to it on two different sides of the street. So it's a bit more modern or bigger than it was when I was there. But, um... Yeah, it used to just be a big golden wheat field. Like, you just look out my back garden, you just see a field, like, for super far. And now it's like big houses and stuff. And they're, they're quite nice. My brother lived in one for a little while. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I just thought I'd mention that. So the Knoll is actually, um, the Irish name for the town is An Isle. So the Oscalga version will be An Isle. 
so the anglicized version will be like if you say on all fast enough maybe with an english accent and say on all and all and all it becomes like then all right that's just the, how it became about um and on isle means the cliff so there's like a kind of a cliff and a river in the in the town that actually got converted into a quarry funnily enough and uh yeah that's kind of the etymology of that now interestingly my last name is mcnally i don't mind uh sort of semi doxing myself people know my name but uh yeah it's mcnally and mcnally means son of the cliff uh because the irish version of that would be like m h a c so you say like mock or it's more like vac so it's like vac an isle would be my last name so vac an isle so on isle has an e at the end of it in the irish spelling so if you're an english person you read it you'd say on isle and then like the english anglicized version becomes on isle mac on isle mac an isle mac an isle mac an isle and that's kind of how you get to where i am so i'm literally part of my name and there's another macnally family in that town that has no relation to us <laughs> but uh yeah, we're like named after where we're from. And there's other McNallys that are fairly famous. So um, I don't know what the deal is with that or if just like multiple people live in places called the cliff or they're just the son of the cliff. There you go, a little uh, etymology lesson for you. All right. Anyway, I've forsaken all that. I'm, I'm considering changing my last name. <laughs> right, anyway, so upgrade to a worker camp. So we could give these people instant homes if we do that for one timber. Seems like a pretty good deal. So what we need to do is basically just, and sorry for hanging around the screen for so long, let's just get a, a logging camp going. Oh, they actually have supplies here. Oh, right, I didn't know we'd get timber. I saw the other things, but yeah, I forgot about that. So that seems like a pretty good deal. Just upgrade this straight away. They've just set up a little camp in the middle of what we're the bandits now. <laughs> but yeah, get that started, get that upgraded. That gives everyone a little bit of shelter, and then we'll build the pantry and stuff first, just to prevent anything getting ruined. Uh, so maybe we can just go with a granary somewhere here. We'll go with the st uh, storehouse just nearby. And then we'll figure out our various other buildings. So gathering, we'll need to go with a forager hut. What year? Oh, it's November. So the berries are about to go away. So we'll go with the hunting then, I guess, which was out in this direction. So yeah, we'll just put it somewhere out here, I guess, whatever. Try to... I know I can't see anything either, by the way. So just being build some roads out to this. What's this? Bodies need burial. Oh, that's interesting. Because we colonized the region where we fought the bandits, the bandits' bodies are here. That's going to hurt our own approval. Damn. I guess we did set up next to it. That's an interesting little problem I created for ourselves, for myself. Ah, who am I kidding? We're all in it together, right? I like to think. I can't see where this road is. There we go. All right, so let's get them working on that. And then also, of course, we'll build a logging camp. Let them just cut down all the trees here, basically. So that's quite a few things for them to get working on now. I'll give the highest priority to the worker camp. And we'll go high on the granary and the storehouse. And then medium on this. We can do low priority on the hunting camp. And then we'll look back in a moment and we'll assign people once things get start getting uh, fixed up and cleaned up in that region. All right, that's cool. Multiple regions on the go. Feels good, man. Feels advanced. I, I think it's so funny that they just sit there like, well, she'd be burning. The most manly pose for the way they're sitting as well. It's awesome. Oh, extra family members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people are going to move in even just to this little camp. That looks nice. It's a little bit upgraded. I'd live there. Sure. Why not? Keeps you dry, just about. <laughs> that name always, um, there's so many of those names in the game, that same name. All right, looking back over at the Knoll, I can just zoom in real quickly and have a look at the situation. So no one's on the storehouse, we have one person in the granary. Maybe take them off now, now that they've moved the supplies in, I think. Put them on the storehouse instead. Pitching post, we could order another ox for here, actually, thinking about it, and maybe upgrade this. Livestock order placed. So we'll need a second hitching post for that one until we get another one upgraded. I don't think we have any planks. We'll basically put a family on that and we can start chopping down lots of trees. There we go. Right, so another person on that one. Advanced. Same working area. Just clear this area so we can actually see what we're doing. <laughs> we'll be good. Oh, and um, the food situation. How's that? 
So they just have 10 bread right now, so we'll have to get someone on the hunting camp once that's done. We'll put that up to medium priority now. So one family's left. We'll put the family on that one. That should be all we need because we won't need builders for a little while until they cut down some trees. Meanwhile, back in swords, things are looking good. Two and a half thousand almost in terms of regional wealth. We have 93% approval, 147 people now. The town is growing really nicely. How's our fuel situation now that we're making charcoal? So it's good, but it's not amazing. It seems like we could do better. We have more people moving stuff around. I wonder, is it a case of getting the firewood over there, or is it just the case that we need multiple charcoal kilns to really ch churn through the amount of wood that we're making? 130 firewood still. Now, just for funsies, I'm just going to extend this out a little bit. Maybe something like that. It's very angular, but... Let's see what we can do. So construction, we'll go with our burgage plots. And we can pop one all the way in here. We can actually have a plot out the back, which is kind of interesting. And then maybe we could do the same out this way. Just come down to this side and wrap around, maybe? Yeah, that one squeezes in there as well. Let's do it. Just making them a bit more compact on top of the warehouse, just a bit more lived in, a bit more realistic, I think. People are trying to live close to the market. We might even be able to fit one in around the back of the clay furnace. The malt house, though, probably not. This, for some reason, has a lot of space out the back. The knoll is running out of food. Let's check in on it. Did we get our hunting camp up and running yet? No. It's almost done, though. Who's this? Peter, a woodcutter, debranching a tree. Oh, this place is looking real nice, actually. Check it out. Oh, yeah, you love to see it. Clearance. Land clearance. All right. Let's get some food on the go. They know where to go, right? 20 animals out there. Do your thing. And uh, with a little bit of growth and approval over in this side of things, we can obviously then start bringing in families and bringing food in here from the other town. That's the idea. Uh, just for a moment, we'll take someone off the logging camp and put someone on the corpse pit just to clear out those corpses that were making people unhappy. I don't know if they're still there, if they've like decomposed or gone away, because the... Oh yeah, it's, it's just says eight, negative eight on the recent 30 days, so I assume they're out there, but I don't see it up here anymore. Oh, speaking of glitches, it looks like this plot is a level three. And its house is embedded in this one. <laughs> so I think we saw that bug. We've had the bug again. I wonder if reloading it would just jut it back out. Or maybe if we expanded the living space and then load it again or something. Maybe. Oh, we still need to finish the large granary. And then once that's done and we assign people to it, I think all the food stalls will be set back up and it'll be much better. Man, we're nearly up to 100%. It's just the lack of entertainment that we've hit a few houses is uh, hurting us right now. All right, there we go. Let's get as many people into that one as we can. Oh, I just realized something. The joiners is active, so let's just pause that. <laughs> but yeah, it's done now. Look at that. Looks pretty good. I was thinking as well, we could probably do with having multiple wells. I only have one, and, you know, people do have to walk to get to it, so... We put another one like here next to the uh, the church. Why not? Where else could we put one? Maybe around the back here somewhere, so they don't have to go so far. Cost basically nothing to build. Uh, maybe on the this side, just for fun. Why not? <laughs> Doesn't hurt to have it. There's no upkeep cost. I'll just let them get building with that. All right, so back over to the knoll. <laughs> it's like they're all dead. <laughs> Failed colony. All right, we have 21 logs now, so I reckon, okay, we'll just start building. Winter's here. Probably build quite small plots. They're not going to have their own patches and things like that. I mean, goats and stuff might be okay, but let's just build small little plots right now. We can maybe say that it's even sort of temporary until we get some more land clearance, like I've said. Then we can really see where we can, how we can shape out a town properly. So we'll just kind of haphazardly throw some houses down. Not a big deal. There's four right there. We 
we've got room for little plots at the back as well. Why not? All right, great. There we go. So it's not the nicest looking, so they're just throwing down just to clear some trees, just to see what we're doing. And then as we start clearing out this area and expanding, then we can really um, get a feel for where the houses should go, the church, things like that. You know, it's going to be a town in its own right. And then we can have farms like kind of all the way around. I suppose one thing that I was debating, you know, it's like, well, farms out here will be really far away. But I wanted to be kind of close to some of the deposits, you know. So it was a bit of a... I think we're central to the deposits, but we're not central to the region, so you might have quite a bit of a distance to go to get some of your your farming stuff set up, but oh well. Need more people on the granary. Need less people on this one. So I've told them to never store anything here, so hopefully they do that. And now they're told to store everything here. And that seems to be working. Now, if this doesn't empty out over time, it seems like it might be, but very slowly. But if it doesn't empty out, when it gets to, like, March, I'll just delete the building, and then hopefully the things won't spoil if they're out and it's not raining, at least. Oh, yeah, so I didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't take people off this to actually build the houses. We can do that now. Do they have firewood for a while? They do, actually, so they're good on that. Let's take people off cutting wood and stuff. We'll leave them on the storehouse. That's fine. Leave them on that. Build a little market here in the center for them. All right, so free stall locations 12. That should be plenty for them. All right, so now they could potentially have a market... Uh, they're building their houses, they'll have shelter, we'll get rid of that. That should bring approval rating up, and maybe people can start moving in if we build a couple more. So let's just assign one or two extra houses for them over on this side of things. I can barely even see what I'm building. Alright, so people have actually just moved in. Oh cool, settlement level increased for the all. that was quick. <laughs> Let me hop back over. Right, so then all, new development point. So an orchardry. Or a heavy plow. So if we go to our other town, how many points did we get? One, two, three, four, five, and it seems like six. So at the null, if we could get six, we'd want the heavy plow, fertilization, probably the orchardry, irrigation, and rye. So one, two, three, four, five, and then I guess sheep breeding. Yeah. Don't need bakeries, I don't think. Although it's kind of interesting, I suppose they could instead of, I was just always picturing sending the wheat over, but I suppose we could. Well, that's just, we could make bakeries either way. This is just to have it at the back of their house. Right, we'll go with the heavy plow then. New upgrade, add a plowing station. What does the irrigation do? It dramatically lowers the amount of damage caused by droughts. I don't know if droughts are even in the game. Unlocks rye. Similar to wheat, rye can be processed into flour, but it's more resilient and therefore can be grown in places with lower fertility. Nice. Alright. Let's do the heavy plow first. Enables employing oxen at the farmhouses for significantly faster plowing of large fields, as well as bringing crops back to storage more efficiently. Oh, I didn't actually know they did that. That's good. So the next point we need is a couple level 2 plots. Man, it's just like starting the game all over again. <laughs> I have three plots here. If there's any extra families that move in, we're just going to be chopping, 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 and saving up as much of this stuff as possible. Wow, this left side of the forest like lights up for some reason. Right, so zooming into the knoll, you can check this place out. We have our multiple oxen here. The hitching post, little market stalls are starting to appear already. The worker camp is still actually there. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, that's strange, isn't it? Residing families five. Hmm. Do, have they not moved into these? <laughs> no. So why does it say they're homeless then? Maybe that's the extra people that moved in with the... I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter what I think. We can just get rid of this now. <laughs> there we go. So hopefully they'll take over these houses. Yeah, the homelessness is gone. So what I'm thinking is you start a settlement when you just have the husband and the wife. And then the son sort of moves in. So I feel like when I upgraded that, the son moved in. But there wasn't space for him, and that's those were the people that are homeless. Like the fifth person to each family, therefore five uh, five homeless, maybe? I could be wrong with that. Maybe it just thought five families were homeless. I don't know. That's my theory. Alright, that's that's I love that little it's just cute starting all over again over there. Oh man, I'll be devastated actually if they get raided. Just thought about that. The Knoll is finishing plots left, right, and center. 
We finished one here. This one's ready to go. Can make that level two straight away. And this one as well, once it's done. Our different wells are being finished also. Should maybe cut down on some travel time for people. It's interesting that we could upgrade that just straight away before it actually received anything. But, there you go. Yeah, they just don't have their food stall stuff yet. It's those little houses are a little too far away. Right now. How's the charcoal going now? Yeah, we're starting to build up a surplus of it. Which is great. So 57 is made in total, 24 is the surplus. So you'd hope that they just start burning through the firewood now, or getting through the firewood without actually consuming it and converting it. All right, so now in the null, we're just going to be waiting on the unburied bodies negative going away, and then we'll be back up to 50%. We should start bringing in one family per month at that time. Uh, Supply-wise, we're all right. Five months of fuel, four months of food. And we have the hunting camp here. And the reserve is 10. Let's bring it down to like 8. That's fine. There's 16 out there now, so they should be fine at going and get, getting the rest of that food. Before we know it, the berries will be back in season, and then we can start thinking about where the farms will go. So I don't think we can't get rid of this road, can we? No, it's the King's Road. Okay. So I can kind of decide where some of our farms will go for us. There's a lot of open terrain here, so we'll start with there first before it takes a while to clear out the other trees. Maybe start rotating them around, uh, depending how we get to it. How's everything out this way? Oh, look at the amount of sheep we have now. 13. All female, because we got, don't have any sheep breeding. Still need to consider moving this over. 99%, man. We're almost there. 99. That's good. Now, all this population growth is great. We're up to 50 families. We've got 156 people. But we do have to constantly monitor, like, our food reserves. They're not that good. You know, we're only... We, well, five months is okay, I guess. But, um... Very quickly, gaining two families per month, you can see that number drastically diminish, especially if you've got any sort of problem and something stops for a while. So just got to keep ahead of that, and that's kind of why we're setting up a farming region, really to support the army to come in our home region, I suppose. All right, over at the Knoll, we're actually up to 53% approval. We're positive now, so that's good. We've got some market food variety. Don't know how, considering it's just apples. Sorry, why did I say apples? It's just meat. There's apples in that list, I guess. But yeah, we just have meat right now, but it might be um, a hangover from when we had some bread, I guess. Either way, I'll take it, and uh, hopefully we can get another family moving in soon. Then we can start to diversify. Plot on the end here. Ready to go. Level 2 out of its mind. What about this one? It's lacking food variety. Come on, man. At least one type of food. You don't have any food right now. So one of them is peddling something, one's going home, another's waiting. Eh, not too sure. They're as far away as these ones are, but these ones actually had what they needed. This could actually be upgraded to level 3 already. I might just do that, because it might be harder to get these ones on the end to where they need to be. And we could expand this one, because it exceeds there's no one there, weirdly, because the building's glitched. This can be upgraded as well. So a few more extra level 3s coming in, coming in hot, because we still have a lot of roof tiles, 112. We still have a decent amount of stone. Hey, we have uh, new people moving into the Knoll. Nice, we have our sixth family arriving. And the snowball gathers momentum. Look, they're basically done. They're, I gotta say, the amount of ox we have, they're just delivering the materials so fast. And we can expand the living space of this place now as well. Should we do it? Why not? For the fun of it. So I've done that here, but we know that this house is glitched inside of the other one, so we'll see what happens. I'm sure on reload it'll fix. It did for that one, so why not? Why wouldn't it? Uh, what are we waiting for, by the way? Re requirements are not met. The tavern supply. How's the ale situation? 88. Should we set up another? I don't know if that would really change anything, but, I mean, having multiple families means it must count for something. And bringing that out there to people. We have three families on the large granary, and the amount of ale that we had in here, it's still the same. They are reducing the amount of herbs, though, so it does seem like they're moving things very slowly. New family moving in. We're up to 50, man, I can barely keep up. 53 families, it's great. 163 people. A period of rapid growth just consistently. Another family. Oh, that's a family member joining a settler, yeah. All right, so we've committed to a couple extra logging camps so that we can store even more timber because they can't actually store anymore right now. Our logging camp is full, right? So they pile all the wood up there and eventually they just hit their limit. 
But with up with extra logging camps, I guess they can just like divide it up, store them elsewhere. We've got multiple oxen now, so they should be pretty quick at doing that. Approval down. Which ones? Uh, this house here on the end. Lacking some food. Yes, that's the thing. We've upgraded them, but of course, if they still are lacking food every now and then, they're going to feel that negative effect even more. Because they're so upgraded that they'll be complaining that something that they needed in order to upgrade is no longer there. They don't necessarily mind not having something if it wasn't something they had before, but if they did have it before, you know, and it was a requirement for an upgrade, then they're often very pissed that they don't have it. There's another couple level 3 houses there. That could look quite nice. We can get this one to level 3. Why not? This one as well. And this one. We should actually be well on our way to getting the um, level 3 requirement here. And we just need two more plots in total. There's only 28 plots at the moment. So yeah, we could actually build another couple. Maybe we could squeeze one in here. It'd be quite tight, but maybe. Yeah, they can do it. I actually have room for another subplot, so go for it. It's thickened our road up as well, which always looks good. Oh, just speed of time, we're just letting them blast through these things. Kind of want to get more reforesters, because we're outpacing them. We've got um, a full woodcutter's lodge and logging camp, sorry. Quite nice to see. The harvest is here. March again. It seems like springtime is when they actually begin to harvest with the vegetable plots. Didn't see anyone actually in the comments about that one, because I did ask, I think, in the, unless I cut it out, but I don't think so. I was just saying, like, um, I didn't know you harvest in spring, basically. I thought you always harvest in uh, September, autumn, but uh, I think carrots might be exempt from that. I don't know. <laughs> trying to remember what far this frontier taught me. This guy, yeah, he's like, yeah, looking damn fine. Nice plot you got going on there. Thanks, Willie. <laughs> all right we didn't move the manor this episode but we did pretty much fill up the pasture with all 20 sheep now so maybe we get that sheep shearing going so it's industry we need the weaver's workshop so just popping it somewhere here on the little bend makes sense to me people get to work actually another thing i want to do out this way is a reforester or a forester hut get that built and we'll assign it somewhere in there keep that place growing as we're chopping away all the trees all right so winter's over we can kind of kind of see the knoll for what it is now the corpse pit of course we don't need anyone on that anymore nothing was stored in there so i think the bodies did just go away so we can get rid of this uh we have another logging camp here oh a couple of people moved in actually we're up to seven nice so these guys can go that way, and you can go that way. So one family, one family, and we'll put someone back on this one. Oh, there's someone already on that one. Hmm, what else could we get them doing? No one's on the granary. There we go. So someone's assigned to everything now. Because we're not building, we're just chopping. Before we start thinking about the farms, probably in time for next year, if that makes sense. Quite happy with it. It's nice to see the little town outline being drawn on the map as well. That's actually a clearer indication of the shape of it than anything. <laughs> now, what's our weapon situation and our population situation for the army now? So we filled three units. That's great. So if we wanted a fourth unit of, let's say, we have spears, we have archers, we have sidearms, pole arms, I guess we could do. So that would require a total of 144 men. We currently have 108, so we can't really have a third unit at all. But what that requires is, yeah, so 36 pole arms. So I'll just cancel that unit for a second. Let's see. In the blacksmith, general, pole arms, one iron slab and one plank. Sure, let's activate it and get working on that. And with some of the extra families, we'll start the iron production again. Bloomery, iron mine, just get the ball rolling. Make some weapons in the background for the future unit that we're about to have always sell them as well if, if you wanted to obviously in the future and plot wise we are just two upgrades away so some of the houses out this way now this is on the street where we had the bugged house originally these are becoming level three so once they're done i think we'll hit that milestone and we'll call it a day for this one it's a very straightforward episode i feel like it was mostly just population and upgrades basically oh can we actually go inside here no you can go into certain houses where the collision box isn't on. Oh yeah, there we are. We're in. 
How cozy is this? This is where they live, man. <laughs> Am I breaking the entire illusion? I think so. Let's get out of here. No collision on that one for us for some reason. They're doing great, though. This street's really coming into its own. Alright, sunrise. Almost done. Hey, there we go. Maximum settlement level reached. There's no more development points from here on. We are now a large town. So, we'll get the deep mine. New upgrade, upgrade to a deep mine. That's what we said we'll do. So, over here... 50 gold and 10 planks enables the building to extract resources indefinitely. If placed over a rich deposit. Feel bad, man, for anyone who goes down a development tree that just isn't for something they have in their region, you know? Someone's definitely going to do that. I, I basically kind of have in an inadvertent way. Nothing to that extreme, but I kind of did a suboptimal kind of thing because I didn't realize it was capped. People just told me in the comments, like, hey, you know you can't get, like, more than five? Seems like you can get six, so that's good. But, yeah, knowing that there's a cap now, it's like, oh, okay. I thought maybe we just have indefinite milestones that might be like almost impossible to reach, but like that would just continue on and on and on if you could support the population to be big enough. 3,000 regional wealth though now. Man, I wish we could tax that trader. It'd be nice. But with approval so high, I reckon taxing, taxing them isn't so bad, right? 10%. Get a little bit of money coming our way. We can take the approval hit and still be over 75, I've, I'm sure. Because uh, we've so many level 3 houses now that the taxes wouldn't be, would be decent. Probably like 10 or 20 per month, something like that, I would imagine. Oh, I'm loving this area now. I think this looks really good. The way these little houses came in together. Nice small plot on that one. Love it. It's like the storehouse keeper almost. This one may be a bit vague. <laughs> I feel like they should just let you choose. Would that be crazy? I know it's like you want an organic city builder, but it'd be nice if you just went like drop down menu, like which one do you want? <laughs> but maybe that'd be silly, I don't know. Or maybe a more sandboxy mode that's like a creative mode or something if you want to just build a nice town. All right, I think we're going to have to call it there. There's not much else to do. We're just going to be waiting for the null to grow so we can get our farms up and running. Uh, that's going to be the food that will support swords. We've got lots of money, so I'm happy about that. We're growing the town. We've gained about 50 people in this episode, something like that. We're up to 55 families now. We're making pole arms, or we should be. Yep, we've got our first one is made, actually. So we're going to be able to have a bit more of a high tier unit. Of course, a lot of that money then, what we're going to do with it is recruit our, what are they called, um, retinue. Right, so we'll go in here, go like this, go like this. I'll start buying up new retinue. We want to get up to 24, so it's quite a lot of gold. It's 50 per, per, per head. So we'll need, like, a, I don't know, 600, 700 or something to get the rest of them. And uh, then maybe not too long in the future, we'll start contesting him for his various regions. I actually don't know if you can fight for one and then get it and then the, it's like peace again, or do you just have a constant battle until only one remains? I, I don't know. I haven't actually seen a war with the Baron. I have seen like one battle, some YouTuber, I can't remember who it was, but it was like a 600 man battle, it looked quite cool. Uh, and I believe they were fighting the Baron, so that seemed like he can field a lot of troops, but I don't know what the reason for that was, or if it was a higher difficulty or what, but I thought I really mind, just kind of trying to always have a goal in mind for the future, but that's going to have to be it for today. So thank you again very much for watching and all the support in this series, and I'll see you in the next one.